So we've got three examples of something going wrong. And so on the far right here, we've riveted the leather to the wrong side of the rivet. Okay, so when you flip that over, you'll see that normally you want the wide head to be on the leather side. And that's going to prevent the leather from just tearing out from load. And the steel, right, the stainless steel is really strong, so it can support the load of that little copper head pulling on it. But the leather may not be able to do so. Okay. So the first one, we put the leather on the wrong side of the rivet where the wide flange head is on the steel side when it should be on the leather side. For the second one, we've used a significantly thinner piece of leather. And so that tends to fail, especially with the vegetable tan, if you pull too hard. So we're going to see if we can get that to tear. And then lastly, this is a very common one where what you've done is you've riveted everything correctly. You've got the wide flange on the leather side. You've got a beautiful rivet head over the stainless steel surface. But um, very often you've riveted either the, the coarse side on the exterior or the smooth side on the interior. Or uh, you attached a buckle instead of a strap or some other subcomponent. So the riveting process was done correctly, but now you need to, rather than destroy the part and replace it, you need to extract the rivet. So the first two right here, we're gonna look at just rivet removal. And then on the final one, we'll do extraction, okay? So we're gonna label that right now. So we're going to have to remove this one and replace the whole assembly. This one we expect will tear, and then our final we're going to extract. So let's get started. So oftentimes when you see the leather riveted on the wrong side, just a little bit of applied pressure and torque tends to get that rivet head to come out. So normally there'll be a copper washer used to hold the leather piece in place while you're doing this. But if we clamp our sheet metal into the vise, just a quick pull will tear that off. Okay. So now you can use a tool. These are called flush cutters. I've also heard them called nippers. They vary in different scale and scales and sizes. Um, farriers can use them when working on horseshoeing. And jewelers use them when they're trying to cut wire flush. And so if you have a good set, you can usually squeeze through in a couple of tries to get through the shank. And the problem is when you're doing this, you've got a three-quarter, sorry, a three-sixteenth inch shank that you've got to get through. And so sometimes when you go to do the extraction, or the removal, you'll find you can't get in there with the flush cutters because of this crown surface or the beveled surface on the back. So you can switch and try a smaller tool and see if that works, like so. But depending on the profile of the jaws and the profile of the copper and whether or not you can get in there, you'll find that one side may cut better than the other. And then the last tool available for just cutting is the baby bolt cutters. And you'll find every time you trade tools, there'll be a trade-off on whether or not you can fit the jaws into the gap to actually cut. So you'll always go back to these flush cutters and realize that that's how you're going to get in there if you're going to get in there at all. And it's just finding a pair that's the size you need to do the cut you need to remove the rivet just by cutting. So I'm halfway through one side and now I'm on the other side and you can see that the rivet is gone. So the next one we're worried about is the tear. If I pull on the leather strap while the armor is in the vise, 
you can see that it's gonna tear. That can be removed in the exact same way. Or you can come back with a file or a sander and grind that surface away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a sander to sand away the interior or the exterior to get that surface down to the point where we can pull it out just to show a different method. This can also be done with a hand file depending on the type of file you have. So then depending on the height of your rivet, you may need to knock it forward so that it's proud of the surface. And you may need to knock it backwards to push it through. And that often requires the use of a punch and supporting your material over the vise. So what we've done is we've sanded this copper region right here, this copper region right here, so thin that we think we can push the metal through the back side. So we're gonna grab a punch. We wanna make sure that our punch can go through our hole like so. And we're going to line up our material. You can do this over your anvil's pritchel hole, or we're going to open up a gap in the vise that's just wide enough to accommodate the thickness of our rivet head, the wide flange, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's resting over that gap, and then we'll center our punch over that region, holding everything firmly, and then we'll extract the rivet. Now, once you have that rivet hole clear, you may have dented it from either the sanding process or the hammering process when you went through. And so you can bring that back over to your anvil or your vise jaw. And then just hammer that subsection smooth so it matches your finish. Now, the only drawback to doing it this way is there's some abrasion. You can see where the angle grinder or your file or your sanding disc was on the surface of the material. So the last one, we're gonna try and do a clean extraction. And the extraction is important because you're trying to preserve both the leather and the metal of the armor. So whatever you've attached the leather to, you're just trying to remove the rivet. So we're gonna do this with just a standard drilling operation. But what we wanna do is make sure that our material is held firmly so that you can see what you're doing, right? but steady enough to where you have control, right? So you want to see what you're doing, you want to have control, and you want to make sure that you're conserving both the leather and the armor. So I've put the leather in the vise to protect it from what we're doing, and then I've got the drill mounted on the part of the rivet that I'm going to drill out. And you could drill this out from the backside or the exterior, right? You can go inside or outside. It really depends on whether or not you can fit the drill into that region and which side you're worried about um, marring. So if you're trying to protect it, you don't want to approach from that side. So we're just going to drill slowly. There we go. And because you're cutting copper, you want to go relatively slow but with a high pressure. And you just want to watch those shavings. And you'll get to a point where it'll start to bite and I'm drilling out with the 3 16 shank, and I believe the shank that we have for our copper is just under 3 16 So right before I get through, that head should pop clean off. So if you notice the drill bit keeps stopping, 
We want to make sure that when we're drilling, when it slips, it's not just biting the other metal. Remember, copper is softer and we'll want to grab the drill bit harder than the steel or the stainless steel next to our copper metal. And that's a good indicator that we are through our hole or not through our hole. So we look pretty close. Okay. I'm going to remove this, show it to the camera. Okay. It's pretty shiny. Let's see if we can darken it a little. So you can see we're relatively deep into that rivet, but we haven't hit any stainless steel. So the question is, if we pull from the back side, is there enough force for this tiny amount of metal to tear? And if the answer is no, you're going to want to keep drilling so you can preserve that leather strap or whatever important piece you have attached. Okay. Okay. So now if you look, the rivet's starting to spin in place, which means we're fairly close. And there it goes. So now we have the remainder of our rivet, right, still blindly attached into the leather piece. And that can just be pushed out manually. Or if your fingers are sore, you can just open the vise back up. Take your little punch and just gently tap it through the leather. Okay, so now you've got a rivet extraction.